Okay, reverse engineering time. This is an adductor sitting on a circuit board as a surface mount component. Let's uh, take it off its cross section and let's uh, see how it's put together. So when analyzing these components, if you want to do a cross section, it's very hard to hold such a small component while you're lapping it. Uh, and uh, that's where some sort of container and a, a tube of epoxy really comes in handy. Um, what I'm doing here, of course, is just simply setting the component on the side and then pouring the epoxy in. Uh, then I let it set and of course as you might imagine I grind it. Um, I always do it by hand, it's called lapping and uh, you have to do that because the epoxy can't get hot. If you try to use a grinding wheel, the epoxy will simply just get warm and uh, turn back to a liquid state and uh, gum up your sandpaper and not uh, get the results you want. Uh, as always you take a very coarse grit and then you actually work your way down to very fine grits, about a thousand grit I think here with this particular one. Anyways, of course, you might be wondering why I'm doing that, and that's to get this photograph here, basically showing the cross-section of the component. Uh, you can sort of see the uh, land patterns that go down to the circuit board, and of course then uh, three coils of copper wire. Okay, next up, I need to make some really precise measurements. Of course, i got a beautiful cross-section, but I actually want to know physically exactly what I'm looking at. Um, no, I can't measure that by hand with any sort of degree of accuracy. A handheld micrometer would be far too inaccurate. Uh, this is where optical techniques can be really powerful. Uh, obviously an SLR camera mounted down taking a picture of the sample. I have a level on it so I've made sure it's absolutely flat and planar. Uh, and of course I get uh, a nice picture and of course I can have all of these uh, wires and line patterns. Uh, I want to measure the diameter of the wire to compute uh, its current carrying capability. Uh, you'd often do this when you're doing a component qualification, making sure the vendor is selling the goods they claim. I also want to measure the distances here, of course, to compute the uh, inductance and see if it matches what was marked on the package. Now, what I have is a photograph here, but now I need to calibrate that against a known source. And uh, one of the really best things is these uh, PCB rulers. Uh, of course, this is the one from EEV Blog. Uh, very fortunate when it was designed, it was put uh, with a 0.4 millimeter scale on it. It's made out of circuit board material, and that's really great because circuit boards have to be held very dimensionally stable uh, in order for components to be soldered and registered correctly. Uh, so this starts to become a very expensive source of uh, surprisingly precise scales. And what I'll do, of course, is uh, now take a photograph of the scale to calibrate it. Uh, the other quirk, though, is the camera, of course, is pointing downwards. The sample is quite high, and so I'm over here beautifully in focus. As soon as I put the uh, scale below and I come back to the uh, screen, of course, it's, it's a blurry mess. Uh, the key is, of course, not to touch the uh, focal length of the lens, don't touch the zoom uh, elements, but uh, to use the rail and actually just physically move the actual camera uh, into a new position, which matches the ruler and uh, is now in focus over here. And I'll just get it over so you can see it. Um, it's very, very tweaky to do this with one hand. Okay, so, um, and we can just get to focus uh, really precisely with a macro rail. And uh, now what I have, I can take this, the photograph here, because I haven't adjusted the camera though, they'll both be in the exact same scale, and what I can do is import these two photographs uh, into a CAD system, and uh, then actually do some analytic uh, math. Okay, so here's a CAD system, here's two photographs, I've imported them at the exact same scale, then I scaled them to match reality. What I'm now interested in is the diameter of the wire, so we can figure out what wire gauge it is, and what its nominal carrying capabilities are. You can now see the real power of the technique, I've got lots of resolution on the screen here to actually create a measurement, and uh, I can now actually ask the tool to compute the uh, distance uh, here. I normally, of course, do it as a, on several points and average it. I come out with about 1.8 uh, millimeters which is roughly a 13 gauge wire, which would be about a 30 amp carrying capability. So I, I now know what the wire uh, is in terms of uh, its diameter, and then I could actually check back on the data sheet if I was trying to verify with the vendor that they sold me an appropriate uh, component. Now the next thing to do is uh, to compute the uh, distances uh, between these wires here and plug those into a formula to see if we can calculate the inductance of uh, this inductor. There's so lots of calculators on the web. This one's, uh, let's see, all about circuits. I entered the number of turns. A two and a half because, of course, you get half a turn as the wire tries to get back to those pads. This is the diameter I measured, the wire diameter. Uh, permeability, I entered eight to come up with uh, 322 times to the minus seven. The inductor was marked uh, R30, which is a 0.3 microhenry, so some correlation there. 
Well, there we go. That's an inductor. Obviously, just a coil of wire and then encased in this uh, ferrite to increase the permeability, which increases the inductance and uh, some of the techniques you can use in terms of analyzing components.